Mike Enzi, the senator from Wyoming, is a friend of mine. He comes from a beautiful rural state, Wyoming. I come from a beautiful rural state, Vermont. But probably that is the end of our commonality. We look at the world very, very differently. Uh, and I would hope that in the course of this debate, the American people will see the very profound differences uh, that we have uh, not only on health care, not only on tax policy, not only on the deficit, but on many, many other important issues. Mr. President, what we are looking at right now is a budget process whose ultimate goal is to remove health insurance from tens of millions of Americans. Now, let us be clear. The United States of America today is the only major country on Earth, the only one. I live 50 miles away from the Canadian border. Many of us have visited Europe. We are the only major country on Earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right, something that I passionately believe in. I believe that health care for all is a human right. I would have hoped that we would be working together to figure out what is a complicated issue as to how we could move forward to guarantee health care to all people in a cost-effective way. But that is not what we are debating today. Let us be very clear. The Republican plan, their budget plan, lays the groundwork for ending the Affordable Care Act, which will remove tens of millions of Americans from the health insurance they get. Now, there is nothing wrong with change. We can always improve. I would hope that during the course of this debate, my Republican friends who want to repeal the Affordable Care Act will come down and tell us what their plan is, how, in fact, they are going to provide quality, cost-effective health care to all Americans. Well, you know what? They all voted against the Affordable Care Act. Senator Enzi is right. We did not get one Republican to vote for it. They have had eight years to be thinking about how they're going to come up with a new plan. And I would hope, but I do not expect one Republican to come to the floor and say, oh, yeah, we're going to throw 20, 30 million people out of their health insurance. This is our new plan. This is how we're going to provide health care to those people. They have no ideas. Their theme is to repeal and then delay. Or someday they're going to come up with a new plan. You don't destroy a house without having another house in which people to live. You don't throw 30 million people off of health care without having a plan to provide health care to those people. Number two, under the Republican proposal, something that many Republicans have been talking about for years, they want to end Medicare as it presently exists a program which is life and death for millions of seniors. And they want to voucherize Medicare, give people a check, and then let them go out to the private insurance market and get the best deal they can. Imagine that you are an 85-year-old senior citizen who has been diagnosed with cancer, and you get your check for whatever it may be. We don't know what it will be, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. And you go to the insurance company, you say, I've got $9,000, I'm 85, I've been diagnosed with cancer. I Give me an insurance program which will take care of my medical needs, my hospital needs, and the insurance agent will laugh in your face because $9,000 or $8,000 will last you at most for a one week. That is their plan. 
Right now, and I've been all over the country, the American people are outraged at the high cost of prescription drugs in this country. Let us be clear, because of the power of the pharmaceutical industry and their lobbying and their campaign contributions, a power that exists, by the way, not only influencing Republicans, but too many Democrats as well. We pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. In fact, one out of six Americans who go to a doctor to get a prescription for an illness can't even afford to fill the prescription. And yet under the Republican proposal, if you eliminate the Affordable Care Act, the donut hole, which now helps seniors pay for their prescription drugs, will be eliminated and prescription drugs for seniors could rise by as much as 50 percent. Oh, and by the way, at a time when we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth, when the very, very rich are getting richer while the middle class shrinks, the Republican proposal not only throws 20 to 30 million people off of health insurance, not only raises the price of prescription drugs for seniors, not only moves forward to privatize Medicare, but shock of all shocks, our Republican colleagues want to give massive tax breaks to the top 2%. Now, among many, many other negative impacts that the repeal of the Affordable Care Act will have, will be one that will impact heavily rural states like Wyoming, Vermont, and other rural states around this country. And that is, as a result of the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, rural hospitals could be forced to close their doors, not getting the funding that they need, leaving millions of Americans with nowhere to turn for critical medical care. So I look forward to this debate. Nobody here thinks that the Affordable Care Act is perfect. Nobody believes that at all. The goal is how we repair it, how we improve it, how we expand health care to more Americans, how we end what has been the case for decades in this country, that we pay by far the highest prices in the world per capita for health care. And maybe we should understand that we are the only major country in the world that allows private insurance companies to profit off of people's illness. Mr. President, the proposal being brought forth by the Republicans is not only poorly thought out, it really is not popular. It is not what the American people want. You go back to your hometowns and ask people that when a time when the top one-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent, when the top one percent is earning all, earning 52 percent of all new income, you go out and you ask your constituents whether we should give huge tax breaks to the top two percent, and they don't think that that is a good idea. According to a poll released this month by Politico and Morning Consult, 80% of the American people think the federal government should be spending more money on Medicare. Only 10% think we should be spending less. 71% of the American people think we should be spending more on Medicaid. 84% of the American people think the federal government should be spending more on Social Security. In other words, the proposal that we are seeing from the Republicans today is way, way out of touch from where the American people are. And there's another issue out there that I find interesting. Senator Enzi mentioned, and of course he's right, that within a couple of weeks we are going to have a new president. Donald Trump will be inaugurated as president. And I think it is interesting that we listen 
to what Donald Trump said during the campaign. The Democrats hear what he had to say during the campaign, what he campaigned on, and more importantly, Republicans listen and hear what their leader had to say about these issues. And this is what Donald Trump said, and he didn't say it once in the middle of the night. He didn't say it in an interview. This was a central part of his campaign. This is what he asked millions of elderly people and working class people to vote for him on. From on. These are the principles that Donald Trump ran and won the presidency on. On May 7th, 2015, Donald Trump tweeted, quote, I was the first and only potential GOP candidate to state there will be no cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. End of quote. On April 8th, 2015, Mr. Trump said, and I quote, every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security. That's not Bernie Sanders talking. That is Donald Trump talking. They want to do it on Medicare. They want to do it on Medicaid. And we can't do it. It's not fair to the people that have been paying in for years. End of quote. Not Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, our soon-to-be president. On March 29th, 2016, Mr. Trump said, and I quote, you know, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan is the Republican Speaker of the House, you know, Paul wants to knock out Social Security, knock it down, way down. He wants to knock Medicare way down, and frankly, you're going to lose the election if you're going to do that. I am not going to cut it. And I'm not going to raise ages. And I'm not going to do all of the things they want to do. But they want to really cut it. And they want to cut it very substantially, the Republicans. And I'm going to do that in the quote. What Mr. Trump said was exactly right. Here are the day. This is the day. They want to cut Social Security. They want to cut Medicare. They want to cut Medicaid. Mr. Trump was right. And millions of people voted for him on the belief that he would keep his word. Well, it seems to me that Mr. Trump right now has got to do one of two things. Number one, if all that he was talking about was campaign rhetoric, then what he was obliged to do now is to tell the American people I was lying. Yeah, I said that I would not support cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, but I was lying. It was a campaign ruse. I just said what came to my mind to get votes. I had no intention of keeping my word. And if that's what he believes, if that's what the case was, let him come forward and say that. But if that is not what the case is, if he was sincere, then I would hope that tomorrow and maybe today he could send out a tweet and tell his Republican colleagues to stop wasting their time and all of our time. And for Mr. Trump to tell the American people that he will veto any proposal that cuts Medicare, that cuts Medicaid, and that cuts Social Security. And what we are talking about right now, let us be clear, no debate, that is exactly what this goal is. That's what this budget proposal is. It is to move toward the voucherization and the privatization of Medicare, to make massive cuts in Medicaid, throw millions of people off of health insurance. So there's a lot of responsibility on Mr. Trump's shoulders. But I would hope that he could save us a whole lot of time by telling the American people that he was sincere, in what he said during the campaign, that he was not lying. And if that is the case, we can end this discussion and get into the serious business of we, how we create a quality health care system, guaranteeing health care to all people in a cost-effective way. And uh, with